Okay, I think we have pretty much everyone that uh, that has registered. I know there's a couple more who said they who had registered, but they're not quite here yet. So if I see them join in, I will add them as the time goes on. Um, just in interest of respecting everybody's time, I think we'll we'll get going. Welcome everyone for taking in our second session. Today, Jake is going to be talking about the Raven rate control module, which is an ISO rate control product. And he's going to be doing some live virtual demonstrations as far as setting up the RCM and what some, some of the capabilities of the RCM are going to be. So we'll spend about an hour with that and um, there'll be half an hour for some questions at the end. So Jake, can you move to the next slide? So just to uh, just a reminder, um, with me, uh, my name is Chuck Barisich, General Manager of Haggerty Creek, and with me is Jake Hills, our Precision Ag Technician, as well as Grant uh, Grant Elgy, our Ag Innovation Lead. Um, some Zoom call rules: um, keep your microphone muted if you if you can. It works better for everyone as. With these technology platforms, basically only one person can talk at a time. And if you do need to ask a question, you can raise your hand or, or put a message in the chat. Uh, the camera is optional, so it's up to you. The session will be recorded. So if you do miss part of it, you'll be able to watch it again at a later point. It takes me about, or it's taken me a little longer to edit the video to post, but I did just post last week's video on YouTube and I'll be sending those links out shortly. And we do have a tight schedule, so we'll kind of keep things moving. So Jake, can you uh, move ahead? So for those of you who are not that familiar with Zoom, if you kind of wiggle your mouse on the screen, you'll see a little window will pop up. And on the bottom of the window, there's a button called chat. You can see the blue arrow that's pointing to it. So if you click on the chat button, you can leave that open on the side of your screen. And if you type in messages and things, you'll be able to see them. And <laughs> that is how we will address the questions at the end. So between Grant and myself, we will monitor the chat as the session goes on. Um, and I think that's enough for me talking and um, Jake, you can take it away. All right. So today we're gonna be talking about the Raven rate control module, also known as the RS1. So the, the rate controller. RCM, Jake, come on. RCM, RS1 was last week, come on. The uh, rate control module known as the RCM is a, is, is a precision application and a multi-product controller. It allows for many different options when it comes to what it controls, what it can do, what you show on the screen. Um, and it can do pretty much, it can do up to five products at a time, depending on the unlocks that you have. Um, it can do pretty well anything from uh, self-propelled uh, equipment, pull behind equipment, air carts, um, any generic applications. So pretty well anything from planting to fertilizer application to spraying, the spreading, all can be done with the same controller. Um, they can do up to 16 sections for um, sex control. And just because it's on your sprayer, doesn't mean you can't use that same controller on your planner um, because it has the ability to have five different preset profiles. Um, we'll go through that a little bit later on, but it makes easy makes it easy between moving from machine to machine or between equipment to equipment. Um, in the John Deere world, um, it's also known as a JDR. JDRC 2000 um, setup control is slightly different, but functionality is pretty well the same between the two. So um, the RCM, it is a ISO based system 
that's easy to navigate and manage uh, for multiple products. It has great diagnostic lights across it. So to tell you kind of what's going on with the controller itself, um, it does have magnets on the back. So it makes that moving between uh, machine to machine or equipment to equipment relatively seamless. Um, it's an ISO bus system. So it is compatible with most ISO bus systems like the Raven Viper 4, CR7, um, your Trimble displays, the 2050s, the 1000s, John Deere displays. Um, and pretty well anything, majority of things with that ISO bus capability, you can put your RCM on. Um, and then the interface itself, when you're in your main run screen off your object wall, it is customizable. So if there's something you see that you don't like or you want to change it a little bit, it's pretty straightforward on how you would do that. Um, it does come with multiple levels all the way from zero to three. Um, so depending on what you're doing and what you want to control, what you want to see, kind of depends on which unlock you put in it. Um, and just because you have a level one RCM doesn't mean you can't unlock it later on to a level three. Or if you have like a level zero where you just want to monitor, it's kind of there. So um, we'll go through some of those options. And for each application, it kind of gives you a little bit of a breakdown of what those options do. So like with an air cart or uh, a generic application, you can run like a two bin fertilizer cart or and row clutches for your corn planter or like a multi-bin air cart, like a John Deere 1910 and run your sex control all with the same module. Um, and then it will also control uh, PWM. When you're running it like a planner, it'll do pretty well all your planner controls, including scale support. Um, so if you're running it with uh, bins and then with the spreader, again, you can have that you have all the options for unlocks depending on what you want to do, as well as that ability to have those integrated scales into your system. Um, on the sprayer side or the liquid fertilizer side, with one RCM, you can run up to 16 sections if you're running three wire valves. And you can run eight sections if you're running two wire valves. Um, again, up to five products. And then for like a, a Hydra's toolbar, your NH3 applications, you can run with the Sidekick Pro ICD injection if you're injecting into your um, Hydra's, as well as having that product control, section control shut off. Um, when it comes to the cabling side, with the RCM, there's, uh, you have the ability to create your own custom cables um, through the ordering. So just what you want and the lengths that you want, or you can adapt it for your older stuff. So there's tons of options for cabling when it comes to building a system or when it comes to retrofitting a system, they make adapters to do pretty much everything with that RCM. So you have your base harness and then it goes to any of the older Raven stuff, you can go to some John Deere cabling, Selford, whatever kind of is already on the machine. Most of the time we can make it work. Um, and then the nice part is, so for, for example, if you're using like a John Deere cabling, we have the adapters, right? So if say you weren't planning on keeping that implement or that machine um, for the rest, the rest of its life and you wanted to keep that RCM for what is controlling your product, all the cabling on say a sprayer, which we've had a customer do, he sold the sprayer, he kept the control. The sprayer itself still had all the cabling and controllers all the way up to the cab. It's just and standard cabling, so it doesn't really matter what the customer wants after that, everything's already there for them. And then the customer who kept the RCM, he's still got an RCM to go on his next machine. So that's 
a really nice part about the way this cabling is done. And then Raven also gives you like a backbone harness. So like a generic cabling. So you start off with selecting kind of how many products am I controlling? Am I controlling one product, two product, three, kind of et cetera. And then from there, you add on what you're gonna do. So like I am going to control granular. All I need is my control valve and my encoder. I don't need all those extra boom sections that I used to have to find somewhere to hide. Same thing with liquid, or if you're running a scale system, you only need to get what you want or what you actually need at the time. And then if you wanted to add something on later, it's just more, just adding on more cable in there. That part is really, really nice with the RCM. Um, but for today, we're gonna be running our RCM that I'm gonna be showing you here using the ISO terminal. Um, for that, I'm going to be using one of the CRX family members. So there's the CR7 and the CR12. Um, so what they are, they're ISO-based monitors. Um, CR7, which is the one I'm going to be using today, it's a seven inch display. Um, you can do up to 16 sections, it's got a built in light bar. It does have a bigger brother called the CR12, it's a 12 inch display, and it can do up to 105 sections. But for today, we're going to be working with the CR7. Um, it's a really nice monitor, it's got a lot of really good features. A um, couple of nice parts about it, it is ISO based. So it's kind of geared towards the ISO control. Um, it's really nice for if you're using like a, using it as a, say a second display for your virtual terminal. So for example, um, if you have a 2630 in your tractor doing your guidance and you want your implement behind you, say your sprayer or your spreader, but you don't want to keep switching back and forth between the screens. So from your guidance screen to your uh, virtual terminal where it is, you can add that second display and then have your RCM on the other display. So all you're doing is watching that as opposed to flipping back and forth. So you can monitor both things at the same time. That is a really nice feature about it. But for right now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna switch over to the RCM on the CR7 and go through some setup and operations. So just bear with me for a second. It's just being a little bit laggy there, Jake. We are viewing this on the uh, over the slingshot portal. Just bear with me for a second here. There we go. It's better there. Okay. So when you first start it up and you're in your UT, that's what's going to show you that um, what we're setting up. We're setting up a new implement. And what it's going to do is it's going to go into the RCM itself and start and start reprogramming it. So it's only it's going to let us access all the options to start with and then slowly cut it back. So when we first get on up at the top here, we're going to need to name our implement or our configuration here. So I'm going to name it
spreader. I'm going to build spreader. So down below that, it's going to it wants us to select a machine type. So we have lots of options for machine types of what we're going to build. We can build anything from a pull behind sprayer to self propelled sprayer, toolbar, air cart, planner. But for today, I'm going to build a pull behind spreader. And then after that, it's going to ask us to put in our application width. So my spreader is going to be 40 feet wide. And then if you didn't want it to be feet, say inches, you can change that here. Um, down below that, we've got our software version number. So that's what software we're, we're running currently. And then our um, hardware serial number. That's a little more important for if you're running more than one um, RCM in the system chained together. And I'll show, that, show you that here. So see here where we have our RCM and then our serial number and then which ECO it is in chain. So which one is first, second, or third, and then the number of products that that one is controlling. So if we were running more than one RCM on a system, this is where we kind of set all that up and how many products it's controlling. Um, and then, so right now we're running one RCM and we're only gonna run one product because a nice feature with the RCM is if, you're, if you are using it for like a granular application, like a sprayer or an air or a spreader or an airflow, you don't have, you can set up your um, spinner speed or your fan speed somewhere else. It doesn't take up a product slot. So right here. And then if you ever get kind of stumped on what the, what you're supposed to be doing up in the top right there, you have your question mark. If you hit that, it'll give you, you hit that. It gives us a definition or an idea of what is on that screen. <coughs> so if we hit our next, this is where we're gonna set up. Do we have a spinner? Do we wanna see the spinner? Do we wanna control the spinner? So for right now, I do have a spinner. I have one spinner sensor and I want to control it. So I enable my fan spinner speed RPM control. So I have my next. This one here. So when you're setting up your um, application type right here, It's going to ask us, what are we looking for? So right now we're doing granular fertilizer. And then if you notice down here at um, product number five, that is our spinner speed control, like our spinner and fan control. It's, all, it's usually the last one in the line for a product. So if we get our next, We have our application type. So what this is, is what used to be um, like granular one, granular two, granular three kind of idea. So we have granular full width, RPM compensated, all those lovely options. If you select one of them, it'll give you a description of what it is down here, down below. So granular full width is a dryer seed application using a single shutoff section. 
and then we want to control our rate and all that documentation. That's the one I want, so that's what I'm going to use. If we want something else, say we're doing an airflow or something with multiple bins or multiple chains, you would select the one that applies. So if say we're using um, creating their RPM compensated. But for right now, I'm just going to go granular full width. And go to our next screen. So the reason it takes a little longer between this is because it's actually writing the program for the RCM while you're going through it. And it's kind of like selecting that what options you can have. I don't need to go through all my planner options. I don't need to go through all my um, sections and stuff like that because I'm selecting, it's kind of organizing it for you. Um, so right here, um, auxiliary driver. So this would be if you're using one of your extra boom sections to run a 12 volt switch or say your bed oil or your chain oiler or like a fence row or headland deflector, you can set that up here and have that run through your RCM as opposed to putting a separate switch in the cab. But for now, we don't have any, so we're gonna keep going. So now we're getting into section setup and section summary. So if you were doing something like a plant or a planner or a sprayer and you had more than one section and you needed to set it up, this is where you would do it. This is where you put in your section widths, if they were equal or odd with sections. And then this is what would kind of look like, but you would have more sections and it would make you go through, okay, section one, section two, section three, and how they're wired. Um, like what switch one is controlling one kind of thing. Um, but for now, we're only running one section, it's wired as section number one, and it's 40 V wide, it's the full width. So we're gonna hit next. Um, so if we had, so we have RPM sensor, um, we have an RPM sensor for product one. So we're gonna have that checked off because it's what we're gonna use to control our rate. So now we're into our setup control valve for product one, our granular product. Um, up at the top here, where you select your valve type, you go with fast closed for right now. It gives you an option of what valve types you can use or what valve type you have. Um, and then instead of having valve cows like we had in the past on our CAN systems or our SCS systems, now we've got it broken down to a little more kind of common sense and actually explaining to you what each number did and what we wanted to do. So up at the top here, we have valve response rate. So what that does is it controls how fast that valve is going to react. Higher the number, the quicker, the lower the number, the slower. Um, if you are going to adjust this, and we can adjust this later on when we're actually running, the only thing we can adjust later on is our valve type. So just keep that in mind. If you are going to change it um, and you go too high or too low, it's either gonna take a long time to get to the rate or you're gonna be chattering and jumping around the rate all the time because the valve's overshooting and undershooting. When we get to um, the control dead band, the next one down here, what that is is the percentage of on rate that valve is gonna react. So when it's, on, when it's 3% on rate, it's going to kind of stay there. When it gets out of that, that's when it's going to start making its adjustments to try and get back to the rate. 
below that, we have control effort. That's how much effort it takes to actually move your belt or the hydraulics or whatever that control valve is doing. It's how much it actually needs to move before something happens. And again, if you have any questions up in the top right corner, you have that question mark again. Um, next, we have our rate sensor. So this is where you can put in your product density, your spreader constant, and your pulses for revolution. Um, notice how there's a red star here. That means it's something we have to enter before we move on to the next screen. So having 380. So you would find that number either on your, the encoder that you're using or in the manual. That comes with your encoder. So below that, we have our gate height. So how, how far open is our gate right now? Um, go to our next screen. We go to set up your tank, your bin. So how much capacity do you have in your tank? How much is actually in your tank right now? Um, low limit, low tank limit. So if you wanted an alarm when I get, say, down, I only have 100 pounds left, or I only have 1,000 pounds left, you can set that up there if you want to put an alarm in. Um, below that, you have a low bin alarm, or low bin level sensor. And that's just a sensor you put in to tell you when your bin is getting empty. Okay, so after that we have so now we're going to set up our rates for our granular. Um, this is something we can change later on, but for now it does want us to put in at least one rate for application rate. So I'm going to do 250 pounds. Just screw it up. And then you have the option to go up to three preset um, rate values. So if you had three different rates you were kind of doing across the field, you can set those in there and jump back and forth. Um, below that you have rate bump. So you can manually bump the rate up and down um, by whatever value you put in there for pounds per acre. Below that you have um, rate selection. So what this does is it gives you different options for what you can see on your home screen, whether or not you see your preferences up on the top or RX, um, rate bump or RX, or like your UT entry. So if you're physically entering your rate every time. But for now, I'm gonna leave it on preferences or RX. Um, below that, we have display smoothing. So what that does is it, it takes the minor corrections. So the one, two, three, four pounds off rate and all those little adjustments that your valve's constantly making. And it kind of smooths that out over your uh, application app. So sitting in the cab, you don't see the erratic rates as much. Um, Below that we have right here, we have our decimal shift. So what that is, is if you were doing say chemical injection at really low rates, and you need to be really precise. You can add in more numbers below your decimal point to get that higher accuracy rate. Going to go 
for the next one. So off rate of learns. This is something you're gonna to need to decide for yourself for kind of how you want to see it or how you want to use it. So if you think of something like a Lime applicator, um, it's only gonna give you an alarm when you're 20% off right now, the way it's set, when you're 20% off rate. So if you're above or below, so say you were doing 2000 pounds the acre with Lime, it's not gonna give you an alarm until you're under that um, 1600 pounds, which is a 400 pound difference. And again, the other way, it'll give you an alarm when you're above that, you're over applying by 400 pounds. Where on the liquid side, it's a little more, gives you a little more leeway because it's only two gallons of the acre back and forth. This is something you're gonna to have to decide where you want it set. Um, but below that, we have a shaft, shaft sensor alarm. So if, the, if there's an issue there, you can turn that on. Um, our next screen, this is where we get into setting up our spinner control. So again, up at the top, we have our valve type, PWM closed, PWM standard, whatever is controlling your spinners. That's where you select that. Um, below that, if you're using PWM, again, you have your valve response rate, which will be how quick that valve responds, control dead band, which is that 2% where it's, if you're 2% around the rate, it's going to kind of hold it there. And then you have your valve delay down below. So that valve delay is when I turn my master switch on and I turn my section on, when is my product actually going to start coming out is do i need a delay in there is it right on that's where you set that there and that's something we can set later on when we're actually in the field um below that we have uh enable pwm smart control that's if you want to use that to have your P the pwm set um our next page is our pwm settings so up at the top, we have our coil frequency and Hertz. So it's how many Hertz that coil is moving at. Again, that's something you're gonna find either on your coil itself or in the literature that came with the coil or with the machine. Um, below that, we have our PWM high limit. So that's how far open that coil can get. Um, right now it's set at 100%. PWM low limit is how for closed, we can set that PWM. Um, right now it's set at 1%. And then PWM startup. That's a really nice feature for when, say you, you're pulling out of the headland, you're going 10 miles an hour, and I want my spinners to be up to speed as quick as possible. So instead of starting from that 1% and ramping itself up, you would set a startup percentage. And it's automatically, when you turn it on, I'm going to say 50%. And then I'm going to adjust from there, as opposed to having to go all the way up that 50% and then adjust from there. So it already it sets it right off of that. We're going 50, we're going to what that preset is, and we're going to start there. Um, that's really nice for a lot of different things where you want that quick response rate coming out of the headlands. I want it on where it's supposed to be. That's where you do that. Um, and then we have our RPM sensor cal. So what is the cal number for our um, spinner speed sensor or our fan speed sensor? And that's where we're gonna enter that. We're gonna go to our next one. And again, we're gonna set in, it wants us to set a rate. So again, we have our three preset rates, rate bump, um, and then how we want to see that rate on our home screen. I'm going to just set these to 650 for now. And then again, you have that display smoothing down at the bottom to kind of make the, the maps a little prettier. 
Again, we have our off rate alarm. When do we want that alarm to sound? Do we want an alarm for it? And our next. So now we're gonna get into our setup summary. So this is really nice because it lets you kind of double check your work. What I named it, what it is, how many sections do I have? How many products am I controlling? Am I controlling a power, um, selected power to apply? So what that is, like some planners, you take power away to turn the clutches on. Right now we have a set to power apply. Um, if we had say a switch box present, it would show up here because it thinks we, it would know we have a switch box if we have master clutches. This is where we kind of double check all of our work before we get to the fin get to the finish line here. Um, so when we hit our next, it's gonna say we have a little bit more calibration to do. We gotta actually run it, make sure everything's working. Um, and then if we hit our next, what that's gonna do, it's actually gonna program that RCM for what we set. So some, if it is a new one, it will drop itself out of the object pool and restart itself. Um, don't get alarmed. It's just programming that RCM for what we told it we want it to do. When we're done, it's going to bring us out to this screen. We our home. That's our run screen for our RCM. That's what we can see in the field if we want. Let's say on our second display. So going down the side here, this is where we have our product one, so our belt. Below that, we have product two. That's our spinner controls. This is where we turn on and off for spinners, um, select the rates that we want and see what it's actually running at. So right now you can see that it's off. I've got my target right here. I have my presets along the bottom. If I wanted to turn it on, I would hit that here, which turns on my spinners. And then if I wanted to switch it between auto and manual, that's where I can, I can do that right here. Um, and then you have your you have your target up here, and then your actual right here. For now, let's take a while. So now that we're back at our belt, or our main product, product one. Again, we have our target right here. Our actual is shown beside us. This is our presets along the bottom here. Again, we have our on and off. Turn our product on and off if we want to run an auto manual. And then going through these settings, um, not setting, these functions here, everything below that is customizable. It's what you want to see on the screen. And I'll show you that a little later on, how to change that. I think we could have our acres, acres an hour, our tank percentages. Um, going down, we have how much is in our tank. If we set that up, how much our capacity is. If you hit it, it'll fill the tank. So then we can get into all those settings here and enter them in. We can put our product density in there. Um, below that, we have our boom status. So we have one section. We have it is on, or it is not, it's not on, our master is not on, right here. That master would be controlled by our external switch, like a foot switch or a rocker switch. Right here, we have our section status. So if you had more than one sections section and you didn't have the um, boom switches or ISO boom sense and speed node, you can control your sections here by turning them on and off. They're just tapping on the screen. Um, if we go to the gears on our right here, this is where we get into our settings. So we can change our implement. This is where if we had separate implements for what we've what else we've built, you can change that here. If you're moving your RCM back and forth between machines, 
we can do that here. Or if you wanted to build a new one, this is where we would edit it. Or if we wanted to remove it. Um, we have our section setup summary. And then below that, we have precision farming setup. So what that precision farming setup is, that is your section control. So we can quickly go through that. And it's when you're going to set up your offsets for when it's going to turn on and off. It's going to ask you for your section width, um, overlap, or offsets. Um, if there's a delay between the products, we can set that in here. This is where we can set up our measurements and our offsets for our implement because it's towed behind. Is it tracking straight? Is it not? How far back is it? This is where we can set all that up. Create our next. This is where we turn um, set up our turn on, turn off um, look aheads. This is something it's nice to do in the field. It, you will have to do it in the field with somebody else. Set up a headland, drive through it. When did it turn off? When did it turn off? How much do I need to adjust it? But this is where we do all the adjustments for it. And to get the best accuracy that we can. Um, we can put in a self-test speed down at the bottom for diagnostics or if we had to limp home or something, um, we have to get the tank empty for some reason. We can set in a self-test speed. It's going to tell the computer, I am driving 10 mile an hour. Apply like I'm driving 10 mile an hour. That's where you set that in. Um, after that, we get into our system settings. This is where we can set up we can adjust our controllers or our control valve. We can adjust our um, rate sensor setups. If we have pressure sensors, we can do that here. All right. Again, we can do our tank fill settings, our auxiliary drivers. If we wanted to keep setting, set more of those up, we can do that in here. Um, and then this is what I wanted to show you. Um, this is where you customize or edit or you can change that home screen. And anywhere you can see uh, push to select, if you select that, it'll show up here. Right now I'm showing area remaining. And then I have all these options for what I can see. What I can see on that main run screen. So if instead of area remaining, I wanted to see RPM one readout or say speed readout, I can put that in there. So if, if I put in my density, now it's gonna show my density there. And then if I go back to my home screen, now my density is shown here. So that's a really nice feature with the art. RCM, it lets you kind of put what you want to see on the screen. Things you don't care about, you can kind of hide, or you don't have to look at, but that's a nice feature here. Go back into our settings. We'll go across the top here. We have our alarm settings. This is where we can adjust that off, off rate alarm for both product one here, and product two. And or if we had a pressure sensor alarm, so we can set that up here. Um, now this is where we're entering those preset rates. If we wanna do that, if you wanna change what's shown, you can change that here. Um, same as product type. And then this gear here, what that's gonna do is it'll tell you what unlock you have on your RCM. 
or if you need to add an unlock, you're doing that here. So right now you can see I have a level one ICM. Now, if we go back to our home screen and the numbers over here on the right, the one, two, three, what that is, that is our um, current totals. So it'll tell you how many acres you've done, how many pounds you put on between product one, product two. Here, you can reset them, um, what your target rates are, just all that fun information. Just bear with me for a second. Okay, so now you can have your device um, across the top here. We have our device, so that RCM, how many acres has it done? How many hours has it done? How many hours has it done actually applying? How far have I driven? So if say you were having an issue with your speed or something like that going through your display, you can check that here. Because if it doesn't think you've moved, doesn't think you're driving, it doesn't think you have any speed. So you can check all that here. That's a really nice feature that they've added into these RCMs as more of a diagnostic side of trying to figure out what's wrong. Um, and then if we go to our little heartbeat here on the right, this is where we can get into some of that system diagnostics testing. So this is where you check your soft, if somebody asked you for a software version, check that here, revision hardware, lots of information. You can look up sensors, all kinds of stuff through here. Um, next, it gives us a test. So if we wanted to run like a catch test or a flow test, on a liquid, a liquid system or a um, granular system, we want to set that spreader constant. This is where we can do, do that here. Um, it'll actually run you through the test procedures for what you pick. And beside that, we have um, diagnostic troubleshooting codes. So if you were having a common issue or something's going wrong, you can, the code will pop up like, and it'll be an active code or an inactive code. So what, and it'll tell you what's going wrong. And then you can give that code to either Raven support or us or whoever's doing your support. You can do that. That just helps more on the support side. So we have a better idea of what's going on instead of it won't turn off. Why well, won't it turn off? I don't know. Like this kind of tells you why and what's going on. So that's nice. Um, keep moving. Now we're back to our system summary, just like we saw before, kind of what's going on with that system. And then our product summary. So how we have that product set up, what's the density, what's the spreader constant. You can look at all that there. So Back to the home screen. We do have a little bit of time, so I can either go through something or start taking some, go through another setup and show how it looks a little different with the sprayer, or I can kind of take some questions or what are we thinking? Is there any questions? I haven't, I haven't seen any pop up yet, Jake. <clears throat> if people are <laughs> want to ask one, they can. Otherwise, um, I think it's okay to do a liquid example if you want. Yeah. I'm just burn through one. one. Yep. So, if we're going to do a liquid one, I'm going to go into my gears. I'm going to go to my machine setup or application setup, applicator setup, change or new, 
right now I'm on my spreader. And I'm going to do a new profile. Get my check mark down at the bottom. And I'm just going to start resetting that controller again. So give us all of our preferences to begin with, and then slowly move it down as we go through. So now we're at the top. I'm going to do spare. What my machine type is. Um, let's go to pull line spire. And then our application width. It's called 60 feet. Just like before. Select our ECU, select the amount of products we have. This time you can see how it's grayed out because we can only do one product on a sprayer. So we're gonna hit our next. And what kind of liquid application are we doing? So are we doing liquid application? Are we doing liquid with a constant flow, single tier? If we had more on lines, we do dual tier or more of a tiered boom system. But for right now, we go with just liquid. And then again, it gives you a description of what you're doing, of what that choice gives you. Put our next. So, how many sections do we have? Right now, we'll say three. And then what kind of valves do we have? Do we have three wire valves? Do we have two wire valves? Most of the time you're gonna have three wire valves. Um, are they equal width sections or are they odd width sections? Are they, do you have fence row tips? Do we wanna use fence row tips? You can select that here. So we're gonna select equal sections. So now it's going to populate. All right, I said I had equal sections. I'm 60 feet all together. There must be 20 foot sections. Um, this is where it gets a little different from the granular side because we told it it was a single bin, single section. Now we actually have to set up our sections. So that looks right to me. I'm going to hit next. Again, do we have any auxiliary drivers? Are we using a boom um, a boom sense wire to say turn on a rinse tank or something like that? You can set that up here. And okay, next, and this is where we go over our section summary. So if we wanted to change it, say boom one was wired to boom three. Change that there. We can change that in here. We don't want to change that, so we're going to next. So, do we have pressure sensors? Is it going to be looking for a pressure sensor? Right now, I'm going to say no. But if you had a pressure sensor or you wanted a pressure sensor, this is where we can put that in. And it gives you what type of pressure sensor do we have. We're going to hit our next. This is where we can select if we have an agitator or if we have flow return installed. We can select that here and control it through our RCM. 
Um, hit next. Now we're back into our product control. So this is where we set up our valve. Now we have more options because we have a standard valve. So that has four numbers. So this is where we have our difference. If we wanted to select a different valve type, say it was running a PWM valve or a fast valve, this is where we would change that. And then if you have any questions on what these settings do, you, have, you always have your question mark up at the top. I think it's in there. So what does controller dead bands? And it gives you a description on what that actually does. Which I find is really helpful when you get into some of the odd settings. So we have our valve set up the way we like it. We're gonna hit next. It's gonna get into our flow meter cal. So what is our flow cal? One minute Raven flow meter, so it'll be 710. What flow meter units am I using? I'm using you know, 10 gallons per pulse. The most common Ravens. Right our next. We didn't do our tank levels. So do we have a tank tank level um, fill or level sensor? You put that in there. Do we have one? I don't. Do we have a tank capacity? We put that in there. So say I had a 750 gallon tank. My current tank level is zero. Low tank level limit, when I would want that alarm to go off. Ten. And do I want an alarm? And if you're using a tank fill PWM to control that, you can set that here. Then again, we get into our product rates. So how many gallons an acre you want to do? Um, if we want a rate bump, we need, again, if you want to set it up for your preferences or Rx, or if you want to do a rate bump, we change that here, display smoothing again, and then decimal shift, because we want one number after the decimal. We have our low limit alarms. And then you can put in a minimum flow limit here on the liquid stuff. So if, you, if you're going too slow or trying to outrun your pump, set that in there. And then now we're back into that section summary. So we can double check what we have going on. And it's not seeing a switch box, so it's going to say no. We have three wire sections and just kind of goes through so you can double check your, your system setup. Now, if we had next, we'll program that RCM again. Again, it might drop off the object pool, it might not, depending on how many times you've done this. This time we've dropped off our object pool. It's not a big deal. Now it's just resetting that RCM for all those different preferences because we've changed it so much between granular and liquid. It needs to reset itself. Popping back up now. And now we're back up. So now we only have our one product because we're only controlling our liquid side. Um, everything's 
pretty well the same, other than now down at the bottom here, we have our three sections. And you can, if I have my switch box, I can turn section off or I can turn it on, depending on how I want to do it. If I had my master on and I was actually applying, these would show up as blue, as opposed to grayed out. So I hit my, I can also change what I'm looking at as opposed, instead of the boom, I only adjust my tank or back to the boom. I wanted to fill it, get my full tank, because I'm leaving the yard with a full tank. And now it's going to start counting down for what I've actually applied. And then you can see here in the middle, I have it's set up so it shows me how much percentage of that tank I have left. If I had my pressure sensor, it would be up here or wherever I set it when I go to set up that object pool. So, yeah. All right, great, Jake. Well, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to, uh, to ask them. And Jake, while we're waiting, do you want to just show the home screen of the CR7 with the, uh, just the way that the, uh, the UT shows up on the main screen, just to give people an idea what they look, what they might be looking at? Yeah. So if I go back to my CR7, this is what it looks like when I, when you first turn it on. Um, if you had street maps, it would show up there right here, or if you had field boundaries that you've created, they would show up there. Um, you can go here to select your field, or you can filter by grower farm field. If you go to your bottom, you have your settings, alarms, and then your UT to get into that UT screen. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit more on the CR7. Okay, no, that's good. And then maybe just show them I guess you can you show them the CR7 and the RCM itself? Yes, I can. I just have to switch over to my phone here. Bear with me for a second. Okay. So can you? So if you can see here, I got my CR7, or sorry, I have my CR7 right here. Nice small neat little display. And then I have my RCM with my diagnostic lights up the top here. So I have my, my three diagnostic lights and then my power light. Really nice, clean, clean setup. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, I think I have a, I do have a question. Um, and the question is about upgrading um, RCMs to the more up-to-date software. Um, the up-to-date software is located on the Precision Raven, uh, the Raven Precision to help, it used to be the Raven help site under documentation and software. Software updates can be done using the modules like the CR7. Um, they can be done with a laptop and, you know, this, the instructions are there for how to update, so they can be updated. 
Um, if you have any questions on that, you know, just send us a note and we can walk you through it. And I don't see any other questions in the chat. So I think we'll, uh, I hate to put anybody on the spot, um, but I think that was pretty good. We went through a couple of different scenarios, you know, fairly straightforward scenarios as to what the RCM can do and, you know, what the capabilities are. So thanks, Jake, for that. And seeing no other questions, just have one last call. Seeing no other questions, I think we can, I think we're safe to sign off. I want to thank everybody for taking their time to listen in on the session on the RCM. Glad our technology worked. And thanks everybody. Take care. And if you're joining us next week, a week from now, we'll be talking about Raven autonomy and what's going on with that. So thank you very much.